Hey folks, I'm R.J. Byrne. I'm with the University of Georgia Thomas County Extension Office. And today I'm at, in the peanut field with Dr. John Beasley, our peanut agronomist. And we're in one of our research plots here in Thomas County. And I'm going to have Dr. Beasley talk a little bit about this research trial we have here. Dr. Beasley? Oh, thank you, R.J. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. Uh, this is one of many on-farm trials that we have. Of course, in, in, in my peanut agronomic program, I have uh, a number of small plot research trials at our research centers at Tipton, down at uh, Atapogos, not far west of here, up at Stripling Irrigation Park, uh, Plains, Midville, Vidae Onion Festival Research Farm. So we have these small plot research trials, but what really helps us out a lot is the ability to or the opportunities to work with our county extension agents in, scattered across the state in the peanut producing counties and to take and go from a small 40 foot long two row plot to a larger size trial, uh, six rows, a thousand feet long or whatever it takes to put the different treatments in. And that's where we are today. We're uh, at one of two trials that I had the opportunity to work with RJ uh, this uh, crop year with. Uh, we've already harvested one. That was a non-irrigated cultivar trial down in the Boston area of Thomas County. Uh, harvested it last week. Uh, today's the 11th of October, so we uh, got it last Tuesday the 5th. So we got that data in, had that chance to plug it in to see what the results were yet, but uh, that was a, one of our non-irrigated variety trials. What we have here in the area just south of Meigs is a cultivar interaction with twin row single row. And this is the first time I've ever had a trial with an agent, large plot trial, looking at the interaction of cultivars with twin and single row in a non-irrigated situation. Most of our trials have always been with irrigation. So we're looking here to see the response of, of five cultivars that have been released over the last four years and their response to single and twin row pattern under rain-fed situations. The cultivars we have are Georgia 6G, Georgia 7W, Georgia Greener, Florida 07, and TIF Guard. Those five right now account probably for 90 to 95 percent of the acreage. You notice I didn't mention Georgia Green. Well, this year Georgia Green has dropped below 10 percent in the acreage level. Probably next year will almost be non-existent. That's how quickly it's disappeared with the introduction of these newer cultivars that have much better yielding capacity, better grades, uh, and we're just trying to see how they were going to respond to all these situations. So well, we've been out here today rating for tomato spotted wilt virus. The amount of virus was very light this year. Normally we would see some fairly high levels, but this year, and it's not just here in Thomas County, but it's all over, we just have not seen very much tomato spotted wilt virus. It's been sort of difficult to explain why, because we certainly had the thrips injury this year, but uh, it's one of those years we was kind of been cycling in and out when we we're in a down cycle. So that's that's good news that we didn't find a whole lot of spotted wilt virus. Uh, we'll come in, I think RJ indicated, in maybe another week or so that these will be ready to harvest. We'll uh, get white mold ratings. Dr. Kimmerite will come in and rate for white mold. Then we'll get yield and grade. And, of course, provide all the data from the trials that we have, the two here in Thomas County and the ones from across the state. We'll provide that data uh, at our winter production meetings that will be set up. And, of course, stay in touch with RJ and the Thomas County Extension Office for the once that date and time and location is set. So uh, this has been a great opportunity to get some more data, just to add to our knowledge base to see what's going on. Uh, RJ had also asked me to just make a few brief comments in regards to what's going on this year statewide, not just here in Thomas County. Of course, it's no news to everybody that it was a very hot, very dry year, and we've had varying degrees of response to our peanut cultivars. I'd say the, the driest area was up around Sumter, Marion, Macon counties, Webster County, up in that area. I saw some dry land peanuts out, just outside of Plains. That's pitiful. They were just barely uh, half as wide as the normal row would you expect to be, and they were burnt to a crisp, and that was two or three weeks ago. So uh, very poor conditions there, not irrigated. And even here in Thomas County, I traveled with RJ back in August, and we saw varying degrees of dryness just within the county, and that was all the way it was all across the state. They're still pegging our yield potential at 3,300 pounds per acre as of the most recent estimate. I think that's overshooting it. I don't think it's that going to be that high statewide average. But we have had some uh, reports of some pretty good irrigated acreage yields. So uh, the irrigated peanuts may be better than we thought, and some of the dry land peanuts not, might not be as bad as we thought. But we'll find out later. Had a lot of problem with SEG2 
uh, peanut loads, that's the damage. And you probably heard down in this area in Brooks County, Coffee County, about some of the seg two loads from the borough above. And we're working on getting that data together to talk with you growers about management strategies on borough bug, and particularly with the severe problems we've had this year. White mold was the other severe problem we had this year, probably the worst we've ever had, according to Drs. Brenneman and Dr. Kimmer Wright. Management of all these problems, we'll talk to you about this winter during the winter meeting season. We'll be providing a written information to hand out at the grower meetings. We'll be discussing it with you, and as always, if you have any questions in regard to peanut production information, by all means, contact the Thomas County Extension Office and RJ to get the most updated information possible. Good deal. Well, Dr. Beasley, from what you've seen so far out here this year, especially with the dry land conditions, just looking at the twin row versus the single row, have you been able to make a, a noticeable difference between the two, or are you just going to have to wait until we get them dug? We're going to have to wait until they're dug here, but I can tell you based on our experience and the trials we've had in the past, one of the advantages we see to the twin row pattern is because when you, you plant, uh, and when I use the example right here, you've got a row planted here and one here, and then over there, this here in the middle fills in quicker because you've got a row planted here. Now we're Instead of planting a row here and a row there at six seed, we put a row. We plant a row here at three seed and a row here at three seed. Because we've got the same population, they're just spatially rearranged. And we just see this area fill in about three weeks quicker, which means we're not losing as much reflective uh, moisture coming out, being pulled out. The reflective heat that uh, kills your blooms down in there. So that's the advantage we see of twin rows. So and we expect in a dry year that we might see a difference, a, a definite advantage to twin row over single row, primarily because of that quicker canopy coverage between the row middles. Good deal. Now I also noticed too this year we've had peanuts that were early planted. They seem to be early to normal coming up in their, their time periods as far as being harvested. And now that I'm noticing in these later planted peanuts, we're seeing they're taking longer. What, what's the deal with that? Well that's a good point there RJ, and the fact that uh, this heat and the intensity of this heat affected these blooms. Those peanuts that were planted later, that were entering into what would normally be their early bloom stage, they started with normally with the start of bloom in about the middle of July, and that's when all the heat started. So you had blooms, but you didn't produce any pegs. And that wasn't relieved until on into August. So what happened is you had peanuts that were probably closer to 50, 60 days after planting before they really started setting a crop as opposed to the normal 35 to 40 days. And it all had to do with the timing of when that heat, uh, intense heat hit. Uh, we did have some early planted peanuts that had, uh, were affected by the heat in June. Then we had a little bit of a cool spell time at the end of June, 1st of July. Then it got intensely hot again. It was just dry all along. And then, of course, the, the real dry weather in September really hampered the development of the pods. Then we've had some cool nights here, especially last week. That didn't stop maturity, but it slowed it down a lot. And that's going to make it even seem longer until they get ready. So uh, the environmental effect, effect issue on this peanut crop has made the, the job of, of you county agents much more difficult as you've tried to help these producers determine when to harvest. And we knew early on that this was going to probably be one of the more challenging years in helping growers decide when to harvest because none of it was going to make sense. You're going to have fields two or three miles apart down the road planted on about the same day, and one might be a month ahead of the other one or behind the other one. Same varieties, different locations, rain fed versus non rain fed, I and mean, just a number of different situations that it could have caused either the, the and the heat caused some of them progress quicker. And we saw that where those that started to set fruit that were planted earlier, they actually came off. We had a lot of fields that were ready at 120 days. Same variety planted three weeks later took 150 days. That's what the impact of heat units and drought and heat can make on getting the crop ready. Good deal. Well, Dr. Beasley, I sure appreciate the information, and um, once we get this peanuts harvested here, we'll have this information put up on our website at the address below, and that'll help you with your upcoming 2011 crop decision. Again, I'm R.J. Byrne, University of Georgia Thomas County Ag Extension Agent. Take care.